Hello, everybody. Welcome to week seven of program evaluation. Today, we are going to talk about formative and process evaluation. So up to this point in the class, we've sort of been thinking more about outcome evaluation. So looking at what we are going to increase and decrease amongst our population of focus. But it's important to take a pause and also notice that there are other two other types of, of program evaluation. Um, evaluations that help us form the project to understand the acceptability and feasibility before we get too deep into the process of implementing the program. And the second is process. We need to make sure that the training, the inputs, and the resources have been implemented properly so that we know that everybody has been onboarded and trained to truly understand if the outcome is really measuring the impact of the program or, or something else that maybe has changed in the environment. So I'm going to quickly share my screen and get us started for this week. Okay, on formative and process evaluation. So just a quick note, we have all submitted, hopefully all submitted our needs assessment. If for whatever reason you are delayed in data collection for several different reasons, um, please reach out and contact me if you haven't already. We do really need to think of a plan together because logic models are really quickly upon us. Um, I'm really excited to teach logic models for you to all learn logic models. So I hope you're all excited like I am. Um, however, this assignment does actually come up pretty quickly on us. However, it doesn't involve um, us collecting data and it's not a very long assignment. It just can sometimes be challenging to conceptualize the logic model. So please reach out if you have any questions on that. I also want to let you know that I'm going to be posting um, in a few days also a video on logic models under the assignments tab where I really break down this assignment put up some examples for you all. So I'm hoping that really carries you through our next, the next step of this course. So this week we are talking about formative and process evaluation. So like I mentioned in my intro, formative evaluation ensures that the program or activity is feasible, appropriate, acceptable before it's fully implemented. Think about the time and money and resources that it takes for an organization to really implement a new program. This is really kind of running in tandem with thinking about needs assessment, is this based on the need we've identified, we've thought of a program, we've conceptualized a program. Now we really need to test the feasibility and acceptability of that program with our community before we really invest in it. So it's usually connect, conducted when a new program or activity is being developed or when an existing one is being maybe adapted or adjusted. The second type of program evaluation I would like to share with you is called process or sometimes referred to as implementation evaluation. So this is often also referred to as monitoring. So as evaluators, let's say we've developed 10 training sessions to ensure that all of the employees at our organization are trained and onboarded to our new program. We need to monitor to make sure that all employees have actually attended all of the sessions. When we actually think about clients attending sessions after the program has been implemented, um, we also need to see how many have attended those sessions, how, what they're thinking about each session, their experience of it, maybe measure that. And this really determines if the program activities have been implemented as intended. Imagine investing so much into the conceptualization of a program, and then maybe the employees don't show up for the training. So we need to really understand these two pieces before we really look at outcome evaluation to look at um, really the reasons behind the increases and in what we want to improve in the community and the decreases of things that we might need have been negatively impacting the community or the population of focus. I wanna pause here for a quick note um, because I know many of you are thinking ahead to our final assignment, which is the program evaluation assignment. 
I want to say that we gave you a choice of choosing a performative or a process evaluation, but I would say 99% of my students actually choose what's known as an outcome evaluation, which is really looking at what has increased or decreased in the community after the program has been implemented. And they look at how to measure that change. So I just want to note that so that you know that these two other approaches are really important. I would really like you to understand them for, you know, your future careers as program evaluators or being a part of an organization that implements new programs. But just know for the sake of this class, most people decide that the path of least resistance um, in this class is to choose what's known as an outcome evaluation, which we will be focusing on subsequent weeks. In this week's soft chalk lessons, we are also focusing on mission and vision statements of a program or an organization, which several examples are provided and why they're so important and vital and why we really need to write them to promote the mission of our new program, not only to potentially for donors or funders, but also to attract clients to our services. So that will be kind of the thrust of our soft chalk activities along with formative and process evaluation. We have our discussion board this week and we also have a mid-semester survey. So the purpose of this mid-semester survey is I really want to understand how you're doing in this course. I want to figure out ways I can better support you. We're halfway through the semester so it's not too late to maybe change or adjust some things in the course. So please give me your honest feedback. Also what's working well for you. So I want to take a look ahead at our three remaining assignments. So we have already completed our needs assessment. Um, we have our logic model due coming up quickly um, the 24th. Then we have our final program evaluation assignment, which is our pretty, which is our bigger paper for this course on November 28th. And then our program evaluation presentations that the last day to turn those in is um, December 5th. So logic model is one of our shorter assignments. Program evaluation is longer. However, I think in many ways, these assignments are a lot easier than the needs assessment because we're not actually collecting data. We're now moving into the proposal stage where we're really imagining, envisioning things. We're getting more creative um, in terms of using that data that we collected through the needs assessment process to understand what it would actually be like to truly implement or propose um, the implementation of a program and propose an, ex an evaluation of it. Okay. So getting more in depth into what a logic model is, which is our next big assignment. So based on the findings of your needs assessment, so this is the very last piece of your needs assessment where you actually present your new program. So you've identified a program or service that you'd like to implement. Um, you're going to use that program or service to develop the logic model. So that can be broadly defined. I'll give you some examples. So we've had students in the past do a program to address social, social and emotional learning amongst elementary school students. I've had students um, who have done a peer mentor program for Kent School of Social Work students. Um, I've had students do an arts-based therapy program for um, survivors who are involved in hospice programs. So it can be quite broad, um, but you've already identified what that program or service is. So what we are going to do with that is then we're gonna turn it into our logic model. So we're gonna look at what we need to input to actually implement that program or service. We're going to look at what activities we need, what resources we need, what people power we need to truly implement that. And then we're going to look and imagine what we want to change within our population of focus. So do we want to increase well-being, decrease depression? Do we want to increase um, social and emotional learning? Um, do we want to decrease substance use? You know, this is all specific to your program, but I want you to think about actually changing something within your population of focus for the logic model, and then you really map that out. And again, more information on this can be found under your assignments tab. Okay, 
Back to formative and process evaluation, which is week seven's focus. So formative evaluations are employed, like I mentioned earlier, to adjust and enhance interventions. They are really used to form programs. That's why we refer to them as formative evaluations. So the methodology can be quite broad. It really depends on the nature of a program. You can do qualitative or quantitative. Also the agency's preferences and the context of the evaluation request. A process evaluation, also often referred to as an implementation evaluation, is really focused on monitoring. Um, so it's quite different than a formative evaluation. So it's the purpose can be to determine why a program achieved or did not achieve its outcome. So this is kind of a safety guard that we put in place. So let's say the program fails, the program never achieved its outcome. Because like I mentioned earlier, maybe it's because people didn't attend trainings. Maybe it's because clients didn't attend sessions. We want to have that data point in place to understand maybe some of the reasons why a program may or may not have achieved its aims. Okay, mission statements. So this is referring to this week's soft talk lessons. So they are statements of purpose that explain what the agency is about and provide clarity to people within and outside the organization. So pay attention to that in your soft talk this week. And please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. I am happy to set up a call, whatever you need. Your cohort has been quite independent so far, which um, you know makes me a little bit nervous because I would really like to figure out ways to better support you. So please reach out. You are never bothering me. I'm always here to support my students. So my parting words, you've accomplished so much this semester. Take a breath, have confidence in yourself. You are halfway through. You can do it. Graduation is right around the corner. This is the part where things start to become really tiring. Um, I'm also going to, during the next week or two, reach out to you individually. I usually do this after grading your needs assessment assignment, and I send you a personal email, just letting you know what where you are at in this course in terms of your grade, um, just so that you have that mid-semester check-in point. So you all are amazing. You're doing great. You can do it. Keep going. And I hope you have a great week seven. Take care.